Happy Friday and happy Fridays with Feidelman. I'm Cheryl Feidelman, the Trauma and Codependence Coach. And today's topic on Fridays with Feidelman is how did your parents listen to you? In addition to the 10-month group program, the Trauma to Truth Masterclass, Trauma to Truth Masterclass that I'm developing and putting out early next year. I'm also doing a listening series. So it's called Listen for a Living, and it's a six-week workshop or series on listening. And we're going over like a broad overview of each distinction in the Facebook group every day at 12 p.m. Pacific for 15 minutes, just sort of highlighting different parts of each distinction. So today we're going to talk about how did your parents listen to you? And I would go so far as to say that how your parents listen to you is the root of the way in which you function in relationship, the way your parents listen to you. Because the way in which we listen to people, listen to ourselves, listen to the world, listen to the air, listen to anything that's going on around us, because we are constantly listening and constantly filtering people and happenings and our own experience through the filters through which we listen. And those filters were installed by our parents. They were installed by the way our parents listened to us. So that is, I think, synonymous with saying that our trauma is based, our unhealed trauma is based in our childhood between ages zero to eight. Everything that happened, every experience that we had where our nervous system went, oh, let me make a decision to keep me safe right now, that is trauma. And covert trauma, which is more of the area that I work in, would be, for ex an example of covert trauma would be the way in which your parents listen to you. Did they hear what you said and then contort and misinterpret what you said? Did they not validate what you said? Did they not even give it airspace, like they weren't paying attention? This over time is covert trauma. It's trauma that isn't massively obvious, like overt trauma, like a like an event or series of events, um, usually in the areas of sexual trauma, um, alcohol abuse, uh, car accidents, so forth. Right? So there's many, many events that would be in the category of overt trauma. But covert trauma is the pathology or psychology or style of communication in your childhood household and or holding environment that slowly impacted you and formulated your identity over time. In addition to it formulating your identity, it formulated how we survive social interactions at work, in a small community, in a larger community, friend circles, intimate relationships, and so forth. There's many ways in which our parents can misinterpret us through the way that they listen. They can, misinter they can um, misinterpret our innocence as being provocative, right? Like we may have said something when we were a kid and our parents thought that we were instigating something. Or we may have said something as a kid that was of our age, right? Like you were speaking in the stage of development of a three-year-old or four-year-old or five-year-old or six-year-old and your parents said, that's so stupid. Or they thought you should know better or they thought you should know differently. Or they reinterpreted what you said to fit their own reality, which was a much older reality a reality that was also set in the confines of their own programming from their generation and from the trauma from their childhood. If you subconsciously spent a lot of time trying to be understood at home or there was a lack of understanding, then potentially as an adult, you're looking to be still looking to be understood. Um, so there's a myriad of ways in which the way that our parents listen to us impacts our um, adult 
way that we listen and communicate. So I'm going to pose the question. Please email me, put it in the comments, and then I will keep opening up this topic based on your emails and your comments. I love how you all email me such generous shares about your life journey. Um, how did your parents listen to you? And you also may say, they listened to me great. That's fine. They totally got me. They totally understood me. They didn't add or subtract anything from what I said. Like I had a, a, like a pretty decent equal um, uh, reflection at home. Great. That's awesome. Um, so share with me what the listening was like, how you were listened to, how people listen to each other between your siblings, your parents, your guardians. What was the listening like? Were people listening? Were they even paying attention? Were they listening for the anger? Were they listening for the sadness? Were they listening for the happiness? Um, was there a lot of talk because silence couldn't be listened to? Some people can't listen to silence. They have to fill the space, right? So anything that sparks for you in how your parents listen to you and also perhaps what the listening was like in the culture of your home. And I don't mean the it could I don't mean the culture, your religious culture or your nationality and that you could include that, but that each and every household, no matter where you are in the world, has its own culture. Right? You ever go into somebody's house when you were a kid and there was a culture of that particular family? Um, so what was the listening like in your childhood household and or holding environment? Um, and how did your parents listen to you? Then we'll start to investigate a little bit into how that listening impacted how you listen to yourself, how you listen to others. Um, the types of things that you project into other people's worlds, the way you interpret things. Um, and we'll start to uncover perhaps the filters through which we uh, listen and the dis different distinctions that I have around different kinds of listening, right? So there's a, there's a relatedness listening distinction. Are you listening to relate? Are you listening for the moment to enter their conversation? Are you list listening, which is you have a list on some somebody and every time they talk, they're speaking through this list, right? The list that you have in your mind, you're hearing them through the filter of these lists, of this list. Um, are you listening with fear? Are you listening with joy? Are you listening with love? Are you listening with acceptance? Um, are you listening for certainty, for the truth? Where's the truth in what is being said? Um, uh, did I say all the distinctions? Um, and we'll go into uh, what about friendly debate? At some point, is there, I'm not safe here, right? Is an, is an anti-opinion or someone not agreeing with you, he, do you hear that as if there's like some sort of attack? Um, where do you, in your listening and what you are listening for, where what is the thing that you normally hear where you go, this is a dis disconnection or I'm not safe. Um, and then there's another distinction of regressive listening. So a lot of these filters, when we listen through these filters, they're filters that were installed when we were children to survive our childhood household. And when we listen from those filters as adults, that's regressive listening. So you're listening with your younger ears the ears that listened to your parents, the ears that were trained by your parents, the ears that had to protect yourself from your parents. So that's a really quick overview of all of these distinctions that I have around listening that I'll be going over over the coming weeks and in the listening series. Uh, but for today, again, please let me know about how your parents listen to you. Um, thank you for listening to my thoughts, theories, and rants. If you want to come into the Trust Yourself Facebook page, um, and, uh, be with us live every day, uh, going over all of this stuff. Uh, link is down below. Thanks for listening to my thoughts, theories, and rants. Happy Friday. Happy healing. And life is now.